Hey guys, we're here today with New World, talking about 10 things you should know when the game launches. Number one, important quests have the same logo as regular quests when you look for them on the map. This becomes very important at certain increments in the game when you're looking to upgrade your camp to the next tier, but like me, you skip right through the screen telling you what mission does that. Looking through the map is not very much help since all the quests look the same, and you'll probably have to direct yourself over to your character screen and click loving rewards at the bottom to be told what the mission is called. Keep this in mind as you progress through the entirety of the game. Since all quests have the same logo on the map, you need to actually look at what the quest is and see if it's important or if its rewards matter to you. The second important thing to know is that there are no NPC merchants in the game. New World has a player driven economy through the trading post. This means you'll undoubtedly come across items that aren't worth putting on the trade post but you still need to get rid of. In this case you would hold S and then click an item in your inventory in order to salvage it for some parts. There are two important things to know with this system. One, in order to not accidentally salvage something important to you, you can right click the item and lock it so that it cannot be disassembled. And two, in order to mass salvage a stack of items, you would hold Control S and then click the item and salvage in large quantities. The third thing you need to keep your eye out for is free roam fast travel stations. Without mounts in the game, at times it can seem like a large game world and seem like you're making slow progress through it. At first glance, you assume you can only fast travel to settlements and they're pretty far and spread out. But there actually seems to be two fast travel stations in the open world in each territory or area. Keep your eye out for these as you approach them and make sure you get close enough to unlock it. You can also most of the time detect them on the map without getting close because almost all of them have the same general shape and somewhat outline the shrine on the map. 4. Faction tokens do not transfer between the factions when you decide to change them, but the gear and items do. So if you find yourself deciding to switch factions for whatever reason and you don't plan to go back to the old faction, make sure you spend up all of those faction tokens, whether it's on armor or weapons, or use it all up on consumables and ammunition, that way you get everything out of that faction you're leaving. The fifth thing you should know in New World is the usefulness of water. Whether you've been watching videos or you've played yourself, you've no doubt noticed that there's no natural health regen in the game. Early on, while you're still learning the combat systems and getting adapted to the systems of the game, you don't necessarily want to be burning up the very little potions or food you have all the time in order to regenerate health. Water in New World will actually restore a small portion of health when you use it, and if you're near a well in a town or any fresh water source, it's very easy to build up. On top of this, whatever you equip in your consumable slots on your character don't cost any weight to your inventory which means you can stack very high amounts of water in these slots for no cost and have a cheap and free way to heal while you're still building up a decent amount of potions and food. The sixth important thing to know is it's free respects under level 20. If you're still slightly unsure about weapons, abilities, passives, or your spec in general, make sure you're taking advantage of this free respec. That way when you pass level 20, you are locked into what you like to use and don't use any unnecessary amounts of money or Azoth in order to respec. The passives in New World can be incredibly important to alter how your character feels and how abilities operate, so make sure you're utilizing this time to test out each and every passive that interests you on the weapons you're trying to decide between. The seventh thing is that you can use resources from your storage in order to craft in the settlement you're in. If you plan to hang out in the area you're at for a while, or you really like the biome and the territory, then make sure you're throwing a lot of stuff into storage to get it out of your inventory. It will be used in the vicinity of that storage shed and pulled directly out of it. When you have the storage menu open, shift and clicking any of the items in your inventory will transfer it over to the storage shed immediately. There will also be an arrow at the top right of each section to store everything in that category very quickly. So if you go in and want to store everything under ore or lumber, you just go and click that arrow at the top right and can do it with one button. The other important thing to note with this system is that there will be a drop down tab where you can look at what you have stored in every city and figure out exactly where you left something. And if you're at a storage shed held by your faction, you can look at the other settlements held by your faction and be able to pull things directly to you. The eighth thing that you should know is about the shield and armor weight system. If you've been following New World at all, no doubt you've seen they have a weight system determining what kind of armor class you're in, allowing you to mix light, medium, and heavy armor pieces together to create the build you'd like. Important things to know with this system is that the shield applies to your weight and will increase it, and it is not useful at all if you are not using a sword. The stats on the shield will not apply to your character unless it's pulled out, and it will not affect anything but a sword and shield user, so this can be unequipped for most of any build unless you really like the look of it. It's also important to keep in mind that your off weapon stats do apply to your character regardless if it's pulled out or not. So whatever you have in your two weapon slots will increase your overall stats even when you're not on that weapon. This means that hybrid characters using weapons that scale off of two different stats can still have an off weapon that gives their main stat an increase in order to help them out when they're on their main weapon. 
Number nine is when you are in the crafting menu, most of every resource can be clicked on to select alternate resources. So really early on in the game when you're trying to craft rations for your character, it can seem like you don't have as many resources as you thought, but it's because the game is selecting just one of the type of meats that can build a ration. So if you click that menu, it'll open it up and let you see all of the ones that you can use, and you can select your preferred resource. The tenth item that I have that you need to know heading into New World may in fact be incorrect come launch. But during the closed beta, combat was skill based. This allowed us to fight enemies higher than us in PvP, and whenever you get jumped by someone way higher than you, you did not have to run immediately and you actually had a shot to win the fight and could defend yourself. And in PvE, this allowed you to fight enemies that were higher level than you, or even a skull marker on you saying they were way too high, provided you fought skillfully and timed your dodges and blocks appropriately. This means running is not always the best option, and defending yourself was an option that you could take if you played well. Now during the open beta, I did not jump into any PvP, and I did very little meaningful combat in PvE besides just checking out a few things. But based upon the patch notes and player feedback that I've seen, it seems like defending yourself against higher level players is not really a thing you could do in the open beta, and mobs were increased to be a little bit tougher, so I'm not sure how well you can fight higher level PvE enemies either. This obviously could change before launch, and they could revert it back more to like closed beta, or they could keep it going on the path they're on right now. So what you should know with combat in New World is I'm not entirely sure. It could be very skill based, or it could be gear based. I'll definitely be looking out for more patch notes as we get closer to launch, and you should either time those dodges or equip that higher gear score. Hopefully this list of items had a little bit of info in it that can help you out once New World launches. If you've got any good tips or reminders for anyone as we approach launch, go ahead and hop down in the comments and put them down in there. Hopefully we can collectively have an enjoyable experience once New World launches and get off to the best and most comfortable starts that we can. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.